Okay, if you think you've got it. I've got it. Uh, <laughs> here goes. <laughs> it begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, what's that you got behind you? Naked Russians. Shaq likes pizza. I'll need to search your bag, sir. Ew. I'll just keep this huge TV then. Major spoilers. Uh, Trek. <laughs> look how I spelled Trek. Yeah. Trek, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Trek nerd, not happening, but I have things to say about Star Trek and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. You are currently on a text field inside of a smart search field. To enter text in this field, type. This is CBS. <laughs> The morning stream. I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to TMS. That is the morning stream for Monday, March 25th, 2019. I'm Scott. He's Brian. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Another weekend in the can. Oh. Actually, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday it was a lot of weekend in the can for me. I was on the can a lot. Oh yesterday. yeah, Jeez. I got some bad uh, uh, general. What is it, Colonel or General? General General, general Sows. Sows. Yeah, general yeah. Sows chicken. Yeah. Tusso. Yeah. Good old General Tusso. I was the only one that ate it, and I was the only one that had a rough day. <laughs> so I think, I think yeah. maybe that stuff was a little tainted. And, was uh, um, were you the only person who ate chicken, or did? Other people in your household have chicken. There was other, there was chicken, but n but not in that form. So there was other kinds of chicken, yeah. but none okay. in the little whatever the hell those things are covered in. And this place is usually a reputable, you know, and they make good, decent uh, stuff. It's usually okay, right. but I think I just right. caught myself a bad run or something. But you think that they'd use the same chicken for all the dishes, you know, everybody's meals, and and whether it's. Unless, unless maybe I guess you know deep fried, if, mm. if it's slightly un undercooked chicken, could be that. Then yeah. the general sows is not deep fried, so it's it might you know, yeah, uh, could be could be undercooked. Whereas then Nick gets sesame chicken and it's deep fried, and so it gets just that that extra little bit of cooking that helps out. Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, Kim had beef and broccoli or something. Mm -hmm. Carter had tofu. Mm. I don't know what Nick had. But it's entirely possible that you're right, that the chicken, the chicken's always the problem. What is it with chicken? It is, yeah. Well, it's because it's uh, a little bit less forgiving. Like beef, you know, you can get away with um, rarer beef. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a delicacy, a good rare steak. Yeah, but you don't but want no rare chicken. I like the chicken. I like the chicken rare. Just, uh, mm -mm. just <laughs> whisk it by the kitchen. Don't even let it touch the stove, and and uh, I'll take it like that. Nobody ever says that. Yeah, you don't want rubbery, boogery chicken. It's pretty and bad. Tofu, come on. I mean, seriously, tofu. Tofu. Tofu's not going to hurt anybody. It's like eating no. packing peanuts or something. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's you nice can, to. You can say a harsh word to tofu, and it's suddenly <laughs> overcooked. I am, uh, but I am happy to report I feel much better. So all, all is good. all is well. Got it out of your morning. system. Whatever it was. Whatever it was, we're good. We're done. It's through you. Yeah, it's through me. <laughs> it passed through me. Uh, so, hey, I got the f I have the funniest story to tell you, and I've been holding on All to right. it since Saturday morning because, well, we didn't have a show that we could talk about it anyway, but right. I have right. been dying to tell this story because I don't know if I've ever laughed at my dog this hard since we've gotten her. This is Rainer, uh, Jim Rainer, the female dog, and uh -huh. she did something so funny the other morning that I still, to this moment, think it's maybe the funniest thing she's ever done. I also feel slightly bad for her, but let me just give you this. I'll tell you the story. You decide if this is okay. like mean for me to laugh at her for this or not. I don't know. Yeah. But she's a pretty high strung dog, uh, very athletic, doesn't really know it, but she could just ninja through any situation. But she's also just kind of, you know, she's very sweet and sensitive and you have to sure. calm her down sometimes and stuff like that. It's just her breed. So anyway, and plus she was raised in a horrible kennel situation with a bunch of mean big dogs that that mm -hmm. you know bullied her would take food she away carried from a her. lot of that baggage with her when you guys got her yeah that, some of that uh yeah for, for sure she has ptsd whatever mm -hmm. the dog version ptsd the dog the d is for dog the d stands for dog yes yeah post-traumatic <laughs> stress dog there you go <laughs> so she's um <laughs> this is really good so i get up early relatively early every day to feed them 
and it's about 6.30 in the morning. And so usually my cue is my alarm's usually going off, but also I hear a little <coughs> out there because one of them needs to pee. It's like, all right, well, let's get up and get them out of there. And they both sleep in kennels all night because they like it in there. I don't know why. They just like it. So they sleep in these two kennels. I come out. My first job, let Boomer out. Boomer goes running to the door, open the door. She goes out, does her business, comes back, and then she has she has food. While she's doing that, now it's Rainer's turn. I go and I open the Rainer cage, and I turn my head. So I'm not looking at this point because it's just every morning we do this. Sure. I routine. turn this yeah. way, go to the door, open it up. She goes out. I turn my head, and I hear this, like, her little tippy-tappy feet on the wood floor, normal. Yeah. But yeah. then I hear this like this total like spin out okay and i turn around and she's cr kind of crumpled up on the ground with her butt to the ground but her legs all pushed up next to her and she's not laying but she's just down there crunched and oh, i go no. okay i go sweetie what's the matter what's the matter and she goes she starts to kind of get up and then she moves barely and then goes like this again and gets all crunched down there and so I thought she hurt herself, like her leg got blown out or something weird happened. Right. Well, especially after what happened to Boomer. Yeah. I yeah. Understand that. I just yeah. thought, oh, no, not one of these again, not the other dog. And mm -hmm. so I get down there and I'm like trying to see what's going on. She won't really let me near her leg. I'm like, oh, crap. She's she's spun out like freaking Scooby-Doo style on the floor. And now yeah. she's now she's hurting or whatever. Oh. I've, I've, I've got to guess. Do you want me to throw out my <laughs> guess, or will that interrupt the story? Well, let me. Don't guess yet. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because here's because yeah, yeah. the, the discovery is the best part. Okay. All so, right. I'm reaching around her to try to find out what her leg's doing, and I'm kind of squeezing her leg, and everything seems fine. But then I notice <laughs> what she has done is she got out of her kennel and then slipped, and the slipping made her excrete a little nugget turd. <laughs> About this big, about the size of a, I don't know, like a gobstopper, right? Okay, uh-huh. And for some reason, this thing is attached by a hair to her butt. <laughs> it's a little dingleberry. Yeah, and it's hanging like a, about the length of a, of a, of a cherry stem. Yeah, so imagine right. a cherry on a stem and how that would dangle. So what's happening is any time that thing touches her back leg or anywhere near her, <laughs> she completely panics and shuts down. So it was just like, dingle, dingle, oh! Dingle, dingle. Oh! <laughs> and she wouldn't move. So I go around there and I crank it out of there with a with a paper towel. Sure. And it's not even gross. It's just this hard kibble turd yeah. thing that popped out. And I throw it in the can and then she's still laying there and, and she won't move still. So I went and I picked her up and held her in my arms. She is... I've never heard her felt or shake Aww. like this. Just... Oh, really freaked out. Oh, so freaked out. She was 100% sure. Am I sure dying, Daddy? <laughs> She thought it was end times. This is it for me. <laughs> oh, so I, okay, well, that's not at all what I thought it was. Because our dogs have gotten where they've slept weird on their on their legs and like basically cut off their circulation. Basically, had uh, oh. you know where their legs fallen asleep. Yeah. Like and so Daisy will like she'll limp and then it'll just kind of like oh, okay I'm fine now. Yeah. But it'll be like this weird like uh, I can't feel my leg. What's going on? <laughs> See, now, I for a second thought that was maybe it, too. I had all this stuff running through my head because I thought, no, yeah, Rainer, you can't be like this. You're such an active dog. This would be really bad for her. Yeah. And then realized, no, it's just like a little tap tap from a, from a dingleberry. A little uh, little knock, knock, knock on uh, the back door, yeah. basically. But holding her, she's just going, <laughs> just shaking Brian, like, like vibrating. And she wasn't cold. It was, like, warm. And, you know, it, she's just terrified. So, Poor anyway, thing. it's all good now. <laughs> good. good she's fine and uh i don't know if anyone learned a lesson probably not um <laughs> i don't know how there was a hair long enough to hold that thing in place also because she doesn't have long <laughs> right. hair she's well, a, sometimes they eat thread <laughs> that, that also doesn't help yeah it was one of nick's hairs gotten like her food or something because his hair right now i don't i don't have pictures to does show he have everybody. really long hair oh my gosh it's out of control it was shorter when he remember when we shaved it off for tina yeah it was yeah. pretty long then this yeah. is like triple that. Just Has like, he not probably not gotten a cut since, <laughs> since he's not. just letting it completely grow out? I think you're but right. But it's way curlier, if I remember correctly, yeah, right? Yeah, very curly, very not tight curls, but like uh, just lots of wavy, wavy, wavy. and tur and uh, and ringlets, that sort of thing. I used to have that too in his age um, when I, if I grew it out. But mine was a mullet. His is much more, <clears throat> you know. I don't know what I don't know I don't know what the hairstyles are called today, but it's it's you'd look at it and go, oh, that's something a kid would have today. 
Um, but it actually suits him pretty well, and he goes, you know, they like it at work. They're like, yeah, we like your hair. Keep your hair like that, which is weird. Usually you're like, get a haircut, you dumb kid. But Yeah, no, I think with some with some kids, uh, Tristan had this for a while, where uh, he had his hair a little bit longer. It's like, oh, dude, that looks really good right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's got it shut, cut, uh, shut cord again, cut short again. <laughs> shut cord again. In shut cord again. Adventures of Shut Cord again. <laughs> but he's got it cut short, and it looks really good too. So uh, we just picked him up from the Greyhound station. He went down to visit his girlfriend in uh, Arizona. Oh, Greyhound, yeah. eh? Oh, I've been on one of those. Greyhound. In a while. He does the bus, man. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, flying is more expensive. I think that's part of it, but. Jeez, Louise! At some point, you got to realize your time is worth money, you know. And mm-hmm. and twelve hours on a bus versus an hour on a plane. Uh, at some point, you got to say, you know what? I think it's worth it just to get get there and, and how, be done. How how often does he go see her? Uh, every like three four months. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just just save up for the plane ticket. It's not going to be save that much up more. For the plane ticket. Yeah, but mm. you know, pretty soon she's she's going to be coming up here. Mm. He's uh, moving back in with us for a little while while the apartment situation gets uh, straightened out. So mm. this weekend will be the return of Tristan. Mm. So uh, mm. no more walking around the house and nothing. Yeah, cat came back the very next day. <laughs> That's right, exactly. So when he, uh, uh, but are they are they like serious? Are they are they a number? Are they they're, serious? They're they're oh yeah they're serious. I mean the plan is that uh, this summer she will. Um, she will actually move up here, and the two of them will probably get an apartment, maybe with uh, another friend or another couple friends. Yeah, they're gonna be because gonna... that goes well, right? Like, oh yeah, the, always. Uh, the the roommate situation where there's uh, <laughs> a boyfriend, girlfriend, and then somebody else or two other people or two. Oh, heaven, uh, heaven forbid, it's two couples because then it's right. like the slightest. Penny on the train tracks mm-hmm. causes a major derailment. Yeah, then you end up like that Thumper and uh, uh, was it Thumper and uh, Ashton Kutcher in the same room together with? A oh girlfriend. yeah, right. Yeah. Oh jeez, you don't want yeah. that. Just to right. just to bring up a recent film sack. So yeah. uh, here, so so hold on, though. Do you think he'll sure. pop the question? Do you think he'll he'll whip out uh, a, a, some kind of ring and go some kind of hipster ring though? Right when he gets from like a. A vending machine just because right, it's a joke. Right, exactly. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think there's any hurry for him. He's he's even said that before that yeah, I'm in I'm in no hurry to get married. And probably every dude has said that at some point and then turned around two weeks later. So this is the one. I finally met the one. I'm totally gonna propose. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know. I I feel like he's gonna stick to his guns and just be kind of like yeah, I'm not in any hurry to get married and and uh, I'm not ready and and all that. So. That's good though. Good for him for knowing where he's at and what he needs to do, and it's all good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I still think that's a it's it is an awkward roommate situation though when you got a couple in there, and then you got mm-hmm. some schmo, yeah. or even two schmoes, you know, or two schmoes. Yeah, right, exactly. You got one schmo on the shitter, you got another one in the kitchen making macaroni <laughs> and cheese, and you're just like, right. oh my gosh, it's actually probably good because this will test their relationship. This would test their resolve, for sure. Yes, because because exactly. how else are you gonna know? You know, if under duress, you can still keep it together. And this is how you do yeah. it. Yeah, yep. No, it. Uh, uh, I've been in the situation where um, uh, where I was dating somebody. We had an apartment, and we had a third friend of ours, a friend of mine, who lived with us, and that did tend to cause problems because there's always that like, uh, it doesn't feel like an equal partnership split three ways, right? It's right. like, oh no no. You two will always vote together. You will be a, a voting block. It's like the uh, <laughs> it's like the reality show alliance. It's like oh no no you you you're gonna basically be two votes that all all point to the same thing no matter what that is. Yeah, it's no de- there's no democracy in the three one. like three of you. There's no democracy. You're you're done. No, no, not when there's not when two of you are in an alliance. No, <laughs> and even if you're not. Three is a terrible democracy. Think about that. Yeah, but three, you know what, though? Three three can be company, Scott. Uh, <laughs> That's true. And all you got to worry about is the Ropers or... Is the, the Ropers or Mr. Furley. Furley yeah. looking in the window going, oh, gosh, Andy, staring at you but while you're doing whatever. Three, three roommates where there's an equality and no one's in a relationship or anything like that works because then you don't have a stalemate you've got like all right well let's uh you know what do we want to do for dinner night i don't know i want pizza oh i want chicken how about you uh i want chicken all right good we're getting chicken Mm because it's two to one yeah if you don't have the relationship going it's pretty good because then you can just 
Who I, I hey, I'm bringing a girl over tonight. We're gonna play Xbox. All right, fine. I'll be. I'm going to the bar with Bill here. You know, like there's just right, exactly. there's then ways the to deal with it. And do exactly. <clears throat> exactly, but the other two are always you're always together. Uh huh. So yeah. I wish him luck in his uh, exactly. pursuit. I think he'll <laughs> exactly he'll need it. Hey, last night. Uh, I went and saw some comedy, Scott. I went and saw some live comedy. That explains this photo on Twitter where you just say hi, and then there's some weird backdrop I couldn't make sense of. Oh, no, that was um, that was, what was Saturday that? night. Oh. That is, uh, if you look really closely, this, so that was this, this long hallway in an area of Denver, downtown Denver, really cool area called uh, the Dairy Block. used to be um, where one of the, the big dairies was, and they've converted one of those buildings into a massive restauranty place called the milk market and it's a bunch of like here's an italian place and here's a uh place where you can get um uh, korean barbecue and then over here is uh fish and seafood you know like fried fish fish and chips stuff like that mm -hmm. it's really really cool it's really nice anyway this long hallway on the dairy block has this um has this mirror that stretches on the ceiling and so i basically was like oh check that out and i did that and took a picture so if you zoom oh, in you'll actually you see down me there okay doing the picture thing and then tina kind of smiling to my right yeah 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 yeah. no i see you now at first it didn't yeah. i couldn't I make know, sense yeah. of the of the the way the, the i mean it just seemed like what i is know this? no it's a weird it, it turned out to be a very cool kind of weird abstract uh photo and i really liked it, it was like oh i'm totally posting this yeah that's awesome yeah, that. but that was Saturday night. No, last night uh, we went to the Paramount Theater yeah. for the second Sunday in a row. Last Sunday was John Cusack. This Sunday was Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, Maniscalco. That a, that's not a real name. Who's that? Who's that? It's a real name, man. It's a real name. It's a real name. It's uh, this comedy guy, comedian. <laughs> I guess they call him comedians now, <laughs> not comedy guys. Uh. Um, he's got a big special on uh, on Netflix. A couple of them. He is. Um, He's been on uh, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, writing Comedians in Cars, Getting Coffee, stuff oh, like that. Oh, I know this guy. Okay. This guy's okay. huge. This guy's super huge. Very right popular, yeah. this, is, this is his moment. Mm -hmm. And it made me think, actually, he was a really good show. He's a very... Uh, so he's an Italian guy, Chicago Italian, grew up in Arlington Heights, and um, is a very physical comic, not quite to the degree of... of like a Robin Williams or a Carrot Top, but he's like, da, 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 da. He's, you know, demonstrating what people, oh, people be like, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> comedy, comedy go to. People be like, ah. yeah. He's very, he's very, he also dresses to the nines. Like he's a, uh, he does. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of what made me think of this uh, last night is that when you and I were growing up, we had Eddie Murphy, we had Andrew Dice Clay, we had, these guys who would be who I would consider to be kind of rock star comedians, mm -hmm. like you know, not just the, the fact that some of them did music, but the fact that it was like they'd pull in almost like a concert crowd for their their concert stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I, I love John Mulaney. Would not call him a rock star comic. No, no. You know, Norm he's more McDonald's his, a, his a more of a subtle. Comic. All those guys are way more subtle and yes. quiet and yeah. All that, but uh, but but uh, this guy, it's okay. He is dude is a rock star comedian, and yep. um, he, he was really really good. But it was kind of kind of cool. I was uh, so the Paramount Theater. It's funny. It's got um, you've got your 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 base floor. I don't know what they call that, the mezzanine or the the first floor, whatever they call that. And then you've got a balcony up above. And oh right, yeah. When we were last week at the John Cusack thing, we were like, ah, these seats are so damn narrow. Even Tina's like, yeah, it feels it's skinnier than than airplane seats and shoulder to shoulder with people. The balcony is kind of the opposite problem. Seats are a lot more comfortable, a little bit a little bit wider, but your leg room is garbage. <laughs> like basically just sitting there with my legs in front of me, my knees were pressed into the back of the seat in front of me. <laughs> Was someone so, in the seat in front of you? It were, no, fortunately okay. not, because if they would have leaned back, they would have, you know, they basically would have been on my knee, on, you know, like resting their head on my knee. Yeah. Fortunately, we didn't have anybody to the uh, left of us. So once the show, once the house lights went down, my aunt and uncle slid over one seat, and George and I both, because we both have had the same problem, we both basically just like 
reach like try to yank our legs through this gap made by our left leg and the seat behind us and pulled our other leg our right legs on top of our <laughs> left legs to kind of cross them for the entire show wow but it was super uncomfortable super uh, jam t- tight in there nice that's what you but want but anyway really really good show speaking of good shows mm-hmm. i promised a little a little mini review we went and saw us <gasps> That's Friday right. Night. You did see us. What did you think the of Jordan us? Jordan Peele deal. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Oh, I yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I um, it uh, it hangs on a couple weird, um, M Night Shyamalan style. I don't want to say hand wavy, mm. but I want to say like you've got a you've got a uh, a conceit that you've really got to just kind of say, okay, I accept that. Mm. Let's move on. Mm. Okay. Because. So much of the third act kind of hinges on that conceit. Um, I th- the the uh, I think the the acting was fantastic. Lupita Nyong'o, man, holy cow, she was amazing in this. Yeah. And the kids were really good. Um, well, yeah, I keep hearing the kids got, are fantastic. You got Elizabeth Moss uh, in there, who's also really good. And boy, you know, between this and Handmaid's Tale, just bad things happen when. Elizabeth Moss is dressed in red. It just doesn't. It's just a bad, uh, yeah. <laughs> bad time for her. I didn't know she was in that until you just now said that. I had no idea. Oh, really? Because no. she's in the previews. Yeah, I missed that somehow. I've, I've seen yeah. the previews a couple of times, and I it never. Maybe it just didn't click with me that I was looking at Elizabeth Moss for some reason. Yeah, which is weird. At one cause... point in the previews, she's like, "Oh, I think it's already vodka thirty or vodka <laughs> clock or something like that." <laughs> anyway, um, but all right. So I mean, people. Are, are you not quite to the brave level that I keep hearing everybody saying? Like it's the yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I would not. I would not. Uh, I'm not at the rave level. I okay. think it's really, really good. And I think I might have even liked it better than Get Out. I really liked Get Out, mm-hmm. but it um, there's you've just kind of got to got to go with a uh, a premise that sets up the 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 the. The big surprise of the film. Yeah, there's just a premise that you kind of have to say, okay, all right, that I can guess. I guess I can believe. Okay, and then the next thing. Mm. All right. I mean, but, they are uh, playing on that old that old horror trope of doppelgangers are scary, right? That's the whole idea. Yes. Yes. The right. whole thing is uh, that doppelgangers are, are freaky. Especially, it's like, oh my gosh, these these people look like us. Ah, they're freaky. Mm. Um, and they're bloody and they're standing there in red jumpsuits and freaking me out Mm. but uh it also will remind you of a thing that you've that that people our age will have forgotten about completely since the mid 80s oh and i won't say and i won't say what that is well i know what that is after i see it will i figure it out you'll know what it is yeah you'll know what it is uh it's one it's i think it's one of the first things you see in the film is a reference to this all right i'm in then yeah I don't know if you saw how much, uh, how many raves freaking um, uh, Shazam is getting. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that with Schleicher today, but man, that movie yeah, apparently is good. I know. It's uh, Tina's going to back to New Mexico this weekend. I think I'm going to go see Shazam, Shazam, Shazam over the weekend when she's when she's gone. Oh, that's fantastic. Know, Sunday. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think she cares about that. No, one. she doesn't care. Well, she's traveling a lot more, isn't she, than she used to? Well, she's just going once a month. It just happens to be that um, she went late in March and is going early in April. I think it also says that I have a funny perception of time right now. (laughs) Well, it might be that, too. The fact that you and I are on a Monday now. This is a Monday again somehow. Right. What the what the hell is that? I swear we just had one. How is it possible, Yeah. How is it possible that seven days has passed and it feels like two to me? I don't know. Yes. Well, and it's and it's the Monday we've been waiting for to find out about uh, that fruit company in Cupertino and how they're going to change the landscape of television forever. Oh, is that today? They doing that? Yeah. I thought that was. I guess that is today. Okay, that's today. We'll see what they're uh, right little... after. Right after our show. I have a lot of theories about it that are not traditional, but we'll see if I'm right about yeah. any of them. All right, uh, yeah. time anyway. for some fun. Not that this hasn't Yay. been fun. This has been very fun, what we've done so far. Whatever. Whatever. No, I know. No, I get it. I see what you're <clears> saying. It's been really, really fun. However. It's been said, Scott. It can't be unsaid now. That bell is rung. <laughs> and uh, now I know how you truly feel, and I'll be in my corner. All right. Go to your trailer. It's your trailer. There you go. <laughs> um, we're going to get Dunaway in here, and we're going to get it on, if you know what I'm saying. And we're going to do it with this theme. <laughs> Hey, 
It's time for Babel Royale with our good friend Brian Dunaway, who's on the line right now. Hello, Brian Dunaway. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Oh, hello. It's so good to have you. Oh, hello. You. How are you? I'm doing great. Oh yeah, you're. Uh, you... I'm still. I'm still. Uh, I'm still high from our uh, sacking this past weekend. I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed well, you that. You do different episode. things to prepare than we do. I, <laughs> I don't get high to do film sack. I don't know what that's, this is. That's uh, that's your. You, know, you got. <laughs> do you have a good source down there for good weed? Like, how are you getting high no, these days? No, we can't oh. do that here. Oh, that's not legal. I got high on was some uh, Mountain Dew Code Red and some Doritos. Mm. Hey, is Lindsey Graham your senator? Do I have that right? He's not my senator. <laughs> I was waiting for that. That's exactly how I was expecting that. Yeah, I just couldn't remember if it was North or South. It's South Carolina, isn't it? No, he he is he is he's, he is from South Carolina. He is in the South Carolina. All yeah. right, not your senator. Love it. He's not my well, president. <laughs> look, he's an look, elected I'm not going to say that I'm like a, I'm not against like any specific things mm. that, that Lindsey Graham does, other than just exist because he just. It always seems like he's, uh, uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Well, listen, I know all about it. Uh, hey, this right. game involves more than just us three. It involves a fourth, yeah. and that fourth person is someone who has called the line and has been waiting patiently. Hi, uh, good morning. Who's this? Hello? They don't want to tell us, Scott. They want to keep it a secret. Dang it. Is this happening again? What happened last time? Didn't I have this problem and I had to start it over again? What was it? I can't remember. Frick. All right, let's, you know what, whoever that was, hopefully you'll be the one that calls in because I have to reboot it. For some reason, I have to run that call thing twice, and it doesn't make any damn sense as to why. So hold on one second. We'll get you hooked up here. Hold on to your butts. Okay. Keep them butts held on to. Held on oh, to your butts. Oh, All right, we'll give this another shot. Chrome has this really funky thing with Hangouts sometimes. Okay, here we go. Now you can call it in. And I'm ready to take your call, whoever that was, uh, and we'll get you hooked up again. Well, anyway, yes, uh, that uh, to to your point, Brian Dunaway, the our episode we did about um, the dark crystal. The dark crystal was fantastic. I enjoyed the, the hell out the of that. The dark crystal method. Yeah, the dark crystal method. Hey, now they're on the line. Hi, who's this? This is Greg from Boston. How are oh. we doing, guys? Hello, Greg from Boston. We're doing fantastic. How's Boston these days? Oh, it's actually getting warm. I'm getting ready for PAX East this week. Oh, yeah, it's this week. And sometimes you guys get yeah. horrible weather during PAX, so it's nice to hear oh, that. It's uh, going to be nice and 60 degrees every day. Oh, it's so good, especially for a sweaty bunch of gamers, man. That's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, they get, we get pretty sweaty. We hope you have a fantastic time there and today on Babel Royale where you can win prizes by playing a little con uh, game with us. Brian, you're going to explain these rules to our I Bostonian. Am. Go for it. <laughs> well, we're going to have a wicked good time here. I'm going to give Scott and Brian Dunaway a topic, and they're going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer or a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with the answer, the win is going to go to the other player. Your job is to predict who's going to come out on top based on the topic. Today, you are playing for carryover prizes from last week. Sproggy Wood, Hot Tin Roof, The Cat That Wore a Fedora Deluxe, Girls Like Robots, plus a physical pile of prizes from Scott. Today, we are adding to the prize pack some physical prizes from me a pair of albums from mike decleva who was an indian the middle artist that we played here on the show uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, to, to rave reviews and if you want it you don't have to take it but if you want it you get my my weight watchers journal that i got last week that i just don't know what else i'm going to do with nice it's empty i right? will that's take all, it all, i will it, take it because i just started uh in january and i lost 42 pounds jeez Ooh, that's awesome nice. okay well then yeah. there you go you, right. then you'll then this will you'll get some good use out of this well done man congrats jeez, that's a lot of pounds Thanks. Yeah, but you only get this if you win. I think I took yeah. yours. <laughs> I think I think you sent it to me. <laughs> Those forty-two pounds. Yeah, no got. kidding. All right, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, that's a big hell of a bunch of prizes there, Brian. Uh, what's our that's topic? Right. Your topic today comes from Ray Robinson, listener Ray Robinson, mm. who uh, said that, all right, well, the 64 crayon count might be too big a, uh, a box to, uh, <laughs> to go through, but the 24 color box of Crayola crayons is, uh, is a pretty good one to, to try and figure out. Sure, there might be some obvious ones in there, but I think there might be a few that trip you up. So I want you guys to name... What's in the 24, the iconic 24 Crayola crayon box? Oh, my gosh. 
Oh, boy. I heard Dunaway grunt in derision there for a second. (laughs) I have no idea, so this is going to be interesting. All right. Who do you think is going to get that right, and who do you think is going to – or no, who's going to start? I think I'm going to go with uh, Scott for the win, and Brian makes me laugh every time I hear him, so he can keep (laughs) and go first. All right. Oh, well, thank you. That's a very nice thing. Yeah, very nice. Well, I'll go with. So this is the this is the, tw- the you said the twenty four count, the, the twenty four count box of we, we couldn't we couldn't afford the twenty four. We only got the twelve. So mm. anyway, <laughs> we uh, I do know I do remember coloring a, a big bird with with lots of yellow uh, when I was a child. So I'm gonna go with yellow with Just the, straight yellow. Good old the, straight yellow. Yeah. Yes. Straight yellow, just plain old yellow, is right. is one of the colors in the box. Very good. I was going to say wallet at first, but then I said, mm, that's what Scott answered last week and lost him. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the best strategy here because I think yeah, eating up the normals would be a good idea because I am actually sure. kind of familiar with a bunch of the others. Not all. I don't think all of them. Not even close. But I think that's my strategy. So I'm just going to throw out red. Red, sure, classic. Okay, uh, red. there yeah. is one that is just called red in the box. All right, red. He he wished that was the last time he saw Andy Dufresne. Well, not that kind of red. <laughs> Different kind of red. Okay. Well, when, I, when I when I wasn't coloring Big Bird, I was over here uh, coloring Oscar the Grouch with with the green. <laughs> green indeed is another color that is. Uh, Represent the box. Basically, we got we probably got like eight that we're going to go through first, and then things right, right, to pretty quick, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, um, Scott, back to you. Because I can't get it out of my head, I'm going to stick. Well, I'm going to use one that's a little bit strange, um, but I'm still in the red vein. So we're going to go with red vein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, brick red. Ooh. Sh- tell me, yeah. brick red's in there? Ooh. No, there is what? not. What? Twenty four bucks, Scott. Ooh. Why How is that go, possible? Why would you go? Why would you go what? so specific so exactly. early on? Why would you go with something like uh, like blue, like brown? Green. Oh Kermit. my gosh! Or blue for Cookie Monster. <laughs> yeah, no brick red in the uh, no brick red in the twenty four. Here's here are the ones you could have said. Shit! You could have said blue, brown, black, violet, or purple. I would have accepted orange, and then you get into the weird ones. Carnation pink, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, red violet, white. Well, white's not that weird. Apricot, dandelion, green yellow, violet red, scarlet, cerulean, indigo, and gray. Really? Brick red's not in that sec- in that. Brick, brick red, red exists, right? I'm not. I'm not wrong that that exists. Brick red is in the 64. There's definitely a brick red in the 64. Is there also a macaroni and cheese, or do I remember that wrong? Um, in the in the bigger set, be, that might be one of the newer ones that they've added. Now, was it the 128 box or was it the <laughs> 64 box? Was it 64 or 68? 64, wasn't it? 64, yeah. Wh- which one had the, the the crayon sharpener in the back? That was the 64. Oh, had yeah. the little that, flip top lid and then the sharpener yeah. in the back. Yeah, that never worked. Dang it, dude! Ah, oh, I wow. hate this. All right, here's wow. what I'm here's here's what what I'm gonna say about all of this. All right. So, did you say, uh, contestant, you're coming to Vegas in April? Did you say that? I am. I uh, am, yes. All right. Do me a favor, because uh, I suck today, man. This really blows. Here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I still love you, Scott. S- send me an email, <laughs> scott at frogpants.com. I, I got a little something for you. I'm not saying I'm going to do this for every loser. I just have a little something for him. He's, he's making a trek out here. He's going to PAX this weekend. Clearly a man passionate about his passions. And uh, 41 pounds down. Like, all this stuff is uh, – I owe him something for my shitty performance today. Sure, sure. So, Scott <laughs> at frogpants.com. Oh, yeah. Well, and CC, right, and CC me, coverville.gmail.com, with your with your mailing address. Regardless, I'm still sending you the uh, the journal, the Weight Watchers. Oh, yeah, you uh, should journal. get that in a matter of oh, yeah. yeah. See, look Woo! at that. Scott sucks. You win. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, man, Dunaway. What the frick, dude? I was sure I was going to – Brick red. What Brick the red. hell? That was thinking? nice. Uh, I thought what I was doing was getting the reds out of my head. Like right. I, I, I was to... going. I was going Sesame Street. That was my strategy. Once I get out of the primary colors, I was going to be in trouble. Uh, my kids had the. Well, I guess I got Brown them the big one. Big one to share. The girls had one in the nineties. That was like a big shareable one. It was probably the sixty-four, and those are yeah. probably the colors I'm thinking of. But I was sure yeah. they That's had the one that had your raw umber. Yeah. And your burnt sienna. Yeah. 
All the ones that you never think of. And also, and your, yes. and your, and your old racist box that said flesh. They yeah, only applied flesh. to white people. Yes, exactly. Probably had <laughs> probably had goldenrod in there. Probably. Yeah, goldenrod was in there. Yeah. yeah goldenrod. Uh, what else? My least favorite 007 goldenrod. movie, Goldenrod. Goldenrod. I remember there being a piggy pink in there. Oh, yeah, piggy pink. Because I thought that, that was one. funny. Uh, but yeah, well done, Dunaway. Just staying close to the 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 That's thing right. made you win today. I'm impressed. Oh, I forgot to play this for the guy. Ah! By the way, oh no. Yes, Brian. Yes. Wes Words was the guy who got uh, called in uh, first and couldn't hear you, or you couldn't hear him. Oh, because of the technical issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe we shoot for Wes Words on Wednesday. That'll be fine. We can, uh, can we we can arrange that to be a Figure lock. Figure out a way I to think. arrange that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think how. Maybe Discord. That might work. There you go. Uh, get, uh, you know what? Ping me yeah. in Discord, uh, and we'll and I'll add you up, and we'll get you going. That'll be good. Cool. There you go. Great answer to that. All right, Dunaway. I hope you have a great day, and congratulations on uh, making me look like a toad. We'll see you later. You're a toad. Bye. Hey. Well, that was it. For <laughs> oh, we are. He was probably gonna say boop show today. Yes, we're doing the boop show today. So that's happening at uh, three thirty Mountain Time. Cool. Um, where are we now? Oh, yeah. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by. For the last year, Cosmic Crit has been taking you on a sci-fi adventure through the worlds of the Starfinder RPG. And they're back with Season 2. Brand new characters, brand new enemies, a brand new journey starting from Level 1. You can find out more and check out our first season at CosmicCrit.com, which is on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere podcasts are downloaded. Mm, that sounds all right. I so like a, nice. uh, a... A little Cosmic Crit. Yeah, a little pen and paper in the in the sci-fi genre. Heck Good yeah. times. Oh heck yeah! Oh heck yeah! <clears throat> the heck do you mean? Kid, check this out. Uh, a naked Russian man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tried to board a plane. He claimed right. to be more aerodynamic, and that was why he was doing it. <laughs> Too much hassle to put clothes on. <laughs> much more aerodynamic more these aerodynamic. way. Aerodynamic. <laughs> Air can flow through. Bits and parts without any sort of resistance. <laughs> the wind goes round bo man boobs that I have. <laughs> Naked man attempted to board a plane in Moscow's Doma de Dovo airport. I don't know how to say that. I don't know. It seemed like the best way. Doma de Dovo. Doma de Dovo. While shouting that clothes make him less aerodynamic, according to the Ren shouting. TV television. <laughs> he was yelling it as loud as he could. Yes. The if man you'd like to get shot, just shout in an airport <laughs> while naked. Yeah. That isn't going to. Uh, raise any hackles or any alarms, you'll be fine. Right. The man passed through the Ural Airlines flight. A Ural is a um, yeah, must be. It's a mountain range and an airline. All yeah. right. It's a yep. tube connected to your bladder and your and yeah. Your, and your I know. Pain and, uh, just just the fact that they begin that sentence with the man passed through the Ural. The Ural. <laughs> yeah. Something's wrong there. <laughs> anyway, he uh, got through registration before suddenly ripping off his clothes and running stark naked onto the jet bridge. Uh, this according to eyewitnesses. He shouted that he was naked because clothes impairs the aerodynamics of the body. He flies with his, uh, with more agility when undressed, quoted a fellow pa fellow passenger, saying, "The nude intruder, the nude intruder." Hide your kids, hide your wife. I love that name, the nude intruder. Because he's getting nude all up in here. <laughs> all up in this place. How's that guy doing? Has he still got his 15 minutes of fame, or is he? I'm done? sure he is. Yeah, thanks to the uh, the Schmo Yoho guys, or yeah. whatever they're called. The, the, the Schmo Yoho. <laughs> well, that's their that's their uh, their name. The brothers. Uh, it's not Schmo Yoho, camera. is it? It's something else. It's Schmo. <laughs> Hold on. It's the Songify the news guys. Songify. Schmo. Gets what this says. The Gregory Brothers, but there's... Oh, well, you're yeah. right. Shmo Yoho. Okay. All right, then. Is that right? Oh. S-C-H-M-O-Yoho. Yeah, you're right. Brian's yeah, right. Shmo Yoho. Yeah, Brian's totally right. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank congratulations. You. I always thought it was said different. I knew it was a weird name, but I, yeah, I screwed that up. Anyway, hey, check this out. There's a video. Uh, oh, the naked <laughs> Russian guy? Yeah, well, they... Okay, so they apprehended the dude. He was taken to the airport's medical room. You, you will go to medical room. <laughs> he was uh, hospital, has hospitalized, hospitalized, hospitalized in a medical facility. The offender is a native Yakutsk, however you say that, uh, but lives in Moscow. 
uh, the press service oh, of yeah, the of interior course. minister yeah. said. The video has been released of the man after police detention, handcuffed on the floor and still very naked. I, think there, was a, yeah. I think there was a golden I-64 level that took place in <laughs> Yakutsk. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I played that game so much. It too, was it. ridiculous. Um, yeah. Let's see. I don't think it holds up, by the way. I saw some recent video and I went, oh. Yeah. We, it was the best we had, but mm, rough, rough, rough stuff. Uh, all right, so this picture, I just want to look at this real quick. Yeah, is there video or? Uh... Let's see. It says video, but I never did go to the link to find it. Oh, jeez. It might just be a, oh, there he is. Oh, jeez. What's wrong with his knees? Is that from getting taken yeah. down? It might have been, man. He might have uh, <laughs> might have gotten some rug burns during takedown on the jet bridge. <laughs> yeah. Look at those knees. That's gnarly. Yeah. Well, anyway, there he is. Uh, he says, let's see. Is there video? Oh, there is video. All right, here you go. Oh, let's see how that happens here. I don't know if this is Russian or what. Oh, I don't have any audio. Ah, crap. Uh, looks like it's, uh, it's eyewitness. It's just audio, isn't it? Yeah. Right. We, ha- we heard from listener on smartphone device who told us what incident was like. <laughs> uh, the Russians. They're the best. All right, how about this story? Here's one for you. Shaquille O'Neal, right. you remember him? He was a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people call him Shaq. Yeah. Most famous sure. for his Shaq Fu video game on the Genesis. Is that, really, is that what we're going to say he's most famous for? Yep, yep. Not known for his uh, incredible basketball, basketball career. But, or anything uh, like that. He's best known for Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu and Steel, the movie Steel. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, one of our first, one of our fir- well, one of our first post-Christopher Reeve mm-hmm. uh, DC movies. Plus, wasn't he a genie in something? Am I thinking of that wrong? Kazam. It was Kazam. Which, which most people uh, do that have the Mandela effect and think it was Sinbad who was in Kazam. Right, and I've never had that. That's the one that I've never shared with that's, anybody. That's, a, that's a, a Mandela effect that you're not part of. Mm-mm. I knew it was Shaquille O'Neal from the beginning. But anyway, he's joining the uh, the board of, of uh, what, what do you call that? The board over, mm-hmm. over there at Papa John's. The em- oh, good. Yeah, the embattled pizza joint. Uh, wow, which is interesting because of the whole racial thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, well yeah. they kicked that dude. So founder John, whatever his name is, he yeah, got John kicked out. Papa Giorgio, I don't know. What couple, yeah, <laughs> couple times got booted, right? Um, Papa Racio, yeah. yeah but he, uh, he, yeah, Papa racist. Um, he yeah. got booted out, and now Shaquille O'Neal is on the board of directors, becoming the first African American member of the board months after its founder resigned following his use of a racial slur. The NBA Hall of Famer uh, will be a triple threat, he says, on CNBC's Squawk on the Street. That's a show? I guess. Can I tune in to Squawk on the Street? Sure. Okay. Is it a guy just walking around uh, <laughs> with a bird costume and the microphone, walking up to people? Yeah. What, what's your take on yeah. the, the Shaquille O'Neal? What's your, what's your hot take? Give us your hot take. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I don't like it. Um, let's see. Do I have... I have I'll bet this is what that guy sounds like. You want to hear what I think he sounds like? Yeah. Okay, yeah, hold on. I, th- I think I have a clip right here. This is your squawk on the street guy. Here he is. Oh, yeah? I think that might be him. <laughs> well, that would be a guy in a Charmander onesie. Oh, that's true. Good point. That, and that show would be called what? Um, uh, uh, Pocket Man Go. No, I have no idea what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call that show. But I'd watch boodle, it. Boodle, uh, today on Boodle Deedle Doo. Yeah, Boodle Deedle Doo with your host, Justin Robert Young. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Along with uh, joining the board of directors, he also is uh, investing in nine Papa John's franchise spots in Atlanta, becoming an ambassador, whatever that means. Uh, everybody loves pizza, and pizza loves everyone, says O'Neill. Pizza is fun, he continued. Everyone knows Shaquille O'Neal, and they know I'm in the fun business, and we want to get this thing back on track, he says. Uh, awesome. he, O'Neal owns various restaurants already. He has Krispy Kreme Donuts franchises in Atlanta, Big Chicken Fast Casual Fried Chicken in Las Vegas. We should go there. We should. Uh, Never heard of it, but we should go there. Let's go to Shaquille O'Neal's Big Chicken. Big Chicken. Up. Uh, And uh, he has a Shaquille's restaurant uh, just called Shaquille's in Los Angeles. He previously owned 25 or 27 Five Guys franchises. 
Well, he is wow. into his food franchises. No Man. kidding. 27.5 guys. Yeah. I, I got to do the math on that one. That's 135 guys. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of guys. <laughs> this gets us a real sausage fest in there. <laughs> uh, it's his first time as a board member for a public company, though. Papa John's will pay him $8.25 million over three years. Well, I'd take wow. that. That'd be all right. Yeah. Uh, the four-time NBA champion told the CNBC host he contacted Papa John's and was always uh, always wanted to be a franchisee. Uh, Steve Ritchie, Papa John's CEO, said the initial talks were to diversify the franchise brand and then morphed into, or morphed based on his aptitude and skills. "Quote: Shaq is obviously bringing the fun, the relevance, the vibrancy to the quality story." What? <laughs> I don't like that. That's dumb. No, no. And I guess uh, I was I was going to check and see if Peyton Manning was still involved, but I guess last year with the whole Papa John or the with uh, with John, mm. um, he said, "Nah, I think I'm done. Sorry, yeah. goodbye." He's out. He didn't want to yeah. do that anymore. Did not want to be involved with that. So, um, what was I going to say about? I forgot. Oh, uh, Shaquille and Rick Fox. Remember Rick Fox played for the Lakers also. Oh yeah, uh huh. They both own uh, Witchy Sports Company. Is it? chat room someone will remember but they own like an overwatch team oh really they own a bunch of well they own teams for multiple games like league of legends and dota 2 oh interesting that. okay wow i uh, can't remember the name shoot but anyway he's got his hands in all kinds of because he's all about the echo fox that's it echo fox is the name echo of the fox thing. huh so if you ever see a like an esports event and one of the teams is an echo fox team you'd be like oh yeah that's, right. the, that's shaquille's team yeah and i think rick i think rick fox might be more involved than shaquille in that side of it but it's still a bunch of his money anyway. by the way scott yeah speaking of esports uh-huh can i just say that we are exactly one month away from overpants. Holy one shite! One month away from overpants, Scott. Oh my gosh, one month and one, two, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, about a month and six hours away from the start of our tournament. <laughs> That's right, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Are you coming to Vegas? No, there's still some tickets. Come, go to, uh, where is it? VivaTMSVegas.com. There's a link That's to right. all you need and we'll get you in there. It's going to be a blast. You can, still get, you can still get rooms at the plaza, but you can't get them in our room block. So yeah. it is uh, officially the 30-day the thirty day countdown. <laughs> so, yeah, this is happening. It's going to be great, and uh, we're so excited about that. And we're going to yeah, – I mean, we don't, we don't exactly know how it's going to – I mean, <laughs> we, we won't really know until we're there, but I think this is going to look like, at least to the people who watch the stream and to people there live, it's going to look like a straight-up – event just yeah it is it's gonna look like a, a regular overwatch tournament except with a couple of doofuses who uh <laughs> don't know what they're doing gonna be doing commentary hmm, at least one doofus well at least at the very least f there'll be a switching around like both of us are planning on playing but when we're not playing brian and i are doing yes commentary doing the commentary together exactly. and maybe the, we'll never we'll never have it so one of us is you know it'll never be neither of us on the stage unless both our well, teams win unless your team and my team go to the very top which i don't see happening but, yeah and uh, if that happens we'll have somebody who really doesn't understand the game like justin robert young he'll <laughs> he'll step in with tom or something and i can't imagine happen. he'd do any worse than me ah uh, the lady with the the sniper <laughs> rifle the purple lady she's gonna shoot the the dude with the big shield oh no oh he's he's down that might be play of the event or whatever they call it yeah you'd be like what's his name in uh, best in show he doesn't really yeah, know what he was is, talking about that is really what i'm going for is the fred willard best in show mm -hmm. kind of thing I that's, like that. that's 100 percent what i'm doing yeah i get you can pretty much guarantee well, Schwid's not coming, chat room, but I can guarantee that we'll have a combination of voices you will enjoy. Yeah, and it will exactly. all have the it will have have all the frills of a proper tournament. Like, right, big screen with the you know showing the the battles going on up there, lights. There, uh, they they've they told us right at the at the, at the get go that we're getting the fog machine. Mm. <laughs> so, Are we getting the fog so machine? The, really? There will be a fog machine in use for, for uh, part of this event. I don't know how it's going to be in use, but we will be getting the fog machine. I am all in on the fog machine, man. And lights. They'll have crazy lights, and they'll zoom <laughs> exactly. in on us at the at the commentary desk, and we'll probably have headsets on going, well, that was a hell of a match there, Bill. Like, we're going to have so much fun. It's going to be so it's much be fun. A blast. Yeah. And, uh, and for those of you who signed up for Overpants, I'm planning on having uh, teams figured out 
today or tomorrow. So, uh, so stick around for that, and that way you guys can start practicing with your team. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Uh, Justin reached for comment. He says, Yeah, boy. All right, great. He's all in. <laughs> That's about right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's about accurate. Uh, final. Let's do this one. <laughs> it's another Russian story. Let's do this. Okay, sure. A drugged orangutan. You know, the big uh, brown smart sure. monkeys. They're the yeah. ones that are always yeah, the smart. The ones that uh, right turn Clyde. <laughs> I, didn't think, I wasn't even thinking of that, but that is absolutely right. He's the he's the smart he's the Dr. Zayas of uh monkeys. Of he the is the doctor exactly yes. Uh was found in a Russian airline luggage. Some more Russian tomfoolery going on. Wow. Need to get monkey across all of Siberia. What what do I do? <laughs> Jam it in luggage. <laughs> Does monkey go in overhead compartment or under the seat in front of me? <laughs> Does that does he act as flotation device if plane goes down? Uh <laughs> I mean, it's horrible that this guy like drugged this. Uh, I know I do feel a little orangutan, bit bad about the orangutan thing, but it's pretty funny. A it Russian tourist funny. attempting to smuggle a drugged orangutan out of Indonesia in his suitcase uh, to uh, bring home and keep as a pet has been arrested in Bali. Uh, Andrea Zigdetskov, sure, was detained in Dens Parsar <laughs> Airport. <laughs> Late on Friday, while passing through a security screening before planning a flight back to Russia, suspicious officers stopped him. Or suspicious officer, meaning they weren't... The officers weren't suspicious. I mean, they were feeling suspicious, but they themselves were not the suspicious ones. Does that make sense? Like, I yes. won't... Is that sentence right, or am I reading it wrong? Suspicious they officers. Not, they did not... Uh, neither took nor left <laughs> suspicion. Like, if I said, oh, those... Suspicious yeah, officers, teenagers. You'd think I was suspicious. saying, yeah, they're they're suspicious yeah. of the guy and his luggage. Yes, but it reads, right. it could read either way. I know, I know. It almost needs to be like a, like a um, mentor and mentee kind of situation, right? Suspicious. Yeah, the suspicious. Sure. Yeah, or they should say the officers were suspicious of the man and his luggage. Maybe that would be sure, a better way to yes. do it. Anyway, to find a, t uh, they opened it up and found a two-year-old male orangutan sleeping inside the rattan basket. Uh, we believe the orangutan was fed allergy pills, which caused him to sleep. We found the pills inside the suitcase, according to the Bali Conservancy, Conservance, Conservation Agency official. Um, Zed Koff, or however you say his name, seemed prepared. He was like a, it was like he was transporting a baby. He's like my own child. He's like my own baby. I changed his <laughs> diaper. He's a nice monkey. He's a good monkey. He's a good monkey. Yes. Look at him. He's good. 27 year old. Please do uh, turn your orangutan <laughs> to an upright position. <laughs> <coughs> the brown ones, they are smarter than the black ones. That sounds racist. <laughs> uh, anyway, the 27 year old packed baby formula and blankets uh, with it as well, so he's planning on feeding it. Police also found two live geckos and five lizards in the suitcase. Jeez, my bury the headline. Group, my favorite rap group, two live geckos. <laughs> and, live, and five lizards only when they tour. <laughs> It's the only time you get to see the five lizards. Anyway, Zetstakov told authorities he uh, protected or that the protected species was a gift by his friend, another Russian, of course, uh, who bought the primate for three grand from a street market in Java. Man, that's not that much money for an orangutan. I'm just saying. Like, no. Brian, it's illegal. They're a protected species, so we're not allowed to do this. But if somebody said to you, if it, if it was illegal and someone said, hey, I got this orangutan for three grand. That's a yeah. steal. That is a steal. That feels like a, a real bargain if you can. You just got to really, you know, it's got to be useful. He's got to do some stuff around the house. It can't just be a pet. Yeah. Because he's just going to sit there and scratch his butt and watch Maury Povich all day long. Mm -hmm. Throw poo at you. Throw poo at you. Yeah. Exactly. No, no. I need some I need some work done. Yeah. Have him, uh, I don't know, what, what job would I give an orangutan? Probably, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like clean the car, vacuum it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, get, get under the furniture with that vacuum. By the way, use those big those big, long arms mm -hmm. to like lift the couch and get under there with the Dyson. Yeah, and never remember that you could kill me with one finger. Just never remember that. Right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, he has been. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. The Russian could face up to five years in prison and seven thousand dollars U.S. in fines for smuggling. So there you go. Wow. Uh, we'll take a break there. When we come back, major spoilers. And no truck nerd, he's on his way to the dentist with his son, but I have a review 
of my watching of the first two and a half episodes of Star Trek Discovery Season 2. Season 2? So I'm finally there. We'll get real specific or anything, but I do have a thought or two, so we'll share that after the break. Break. And we get a little mashup later. Uh, Jamie's even out of town, and we still have a mashup somehow. I don't He's He's insane. That's because he's he's just so good at what he does. He's a dedicated individual. Mm -hmm. All of that and more coming right up. But before that, a musical break. That's right. Michael Miller from Colorado Springs wrote in and said, Hey, Brian. I stumbled on a group called Chair Model, heard one of their songs on Shameless, I hunted them down on YouTube and Facebook, and found that they don't get much of a following, which stinks because I think they're really good. I figured TMS can get them a little exposure. Um, he also forwarded me a uh, an email that he had with the band where they say, yes, you can play our music on the show. Thank you so much. Um, this is really good. This is like... Uh, uh, this is right up my alley as far as that kind of 80s synth pop, but 60s influence. I don't know. I really like it. Now, here's what you're going to like, Scott. Number one, they're from Oklahoma City. Mm. That's not the part that I think you're going to like. But okay. but their members are uh, Joe White the Third, Abby Road. Mm. Her name is Abby Road. And Taylor Johnson. Whoa! They have a member named Taylor Johnson. Moonlighting and didn't tell her parents. Mm. I know. Just a little secret right there. Mm. Uh, So this is the band Chair Model from their album, their self-titled album from last year, 2018. Here's the song, That's Me. All right. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. The results are in. Cats have made Tidy Cat 3 America's number one cat box filler. Nothing beats a Stouffer's pizza. This is the morning stream. That's some sweet weed, man. We're back, everybody. <clears throat> uh, welcome back to the show. Oh, by the way, quick song comment. Sure. Um, <laughs> is this about Friday's uh, tracks, Scott? Yeah, I'm an idiot. On the PM edition of the show on Friday, I even said right before it, Hey, last week I goofed up and forgot to put it in. There's something about the PM structure that I just, it, it makes me feel like I forget. I don't know, I just forget. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know why. I never forget on The Daily Show where we have two songs. I know, I know. It is um, funny. I just somehow passed it up. And so right after saying, oh, I won't let that happen again, I literally let it happen again. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I went back and fixed it, by the way. So if if uh, if you, you're all willing to download another 65 gig of, or uh, meg rather, of uh, data, uh, the song is now on the uh, the one that's on the feed and is all refreshed and running well. So. And, and you should do so because it's really good. It's the Zimmer's Lust for Life. So uh, one of the one of the uh, world's oldest bands and members, uh, most of whom are passed away, mm. uh, mm-hmm. uh, just because of life. Well, yeah, no um, life comes at you, dude. It comes at uh, you. Yeah, it totally does. Sure. Anyway, so it's. Uh, um, JC Kelson, did you say 65 gigabytes of show? I think it's probably only 65 megs. Yeah, of I show. said gig and then corrected myself and said meg. So, okay, I don't know. good. He must have not heard the correction, but yes, I corrected it. So, there you go. So, yeah. anyway, uh, go check it out. It's a great song, Lust for Life, Iggy Pop, covered by a bunch of old people. Catch it. All right, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this right here. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Oh. Only one, one, one stanza of the beer, beer. So that means, oh, I'm so not ready. Okay, here we go. Steven. Welcome to the show, Mr. Steven Schleicher, all the way from Majorspoilers.com and the beautiful surroundings of Hayes, Kansas. Welcome back, sir. Hello, Scott. Hello, Brian. Hello. Hello. It's good to have you here. Oh, thank you. You know, you and I have a little bit of a secret happening today. Yeah, that's what I was writing down. I had to write a memo. Don't forget to do this. Yeah. And that's why the song went too long. So sorry. So let's just say this. Today, you know, we're just going to go ahead and tell people. We'll all be pushing <laughs> up our spoiler. glasses and saying, oh, well, I'm actually. Well, we'll just tell people. It's fine. Uh, today, you will get the first of what will now become a monthly kind of news and commentary roundup about the, co- the, uh, the comic book world with the relaunch of Comic Dorks. Comic wow. Dorks. Cool. Go to comicdorks.com and uh, they can get all resubbed if you if you ever abandon it or if you still have it in your readers, it'll it'll show right up in the feed. Uh, but starting today, uh, Stephen and I are gonna crank that stuff out. The big question on people's lips: Hey, we ever gonna see uh, Mark again? We ever gonna see Scott Kurtz again? Possibly, I don't know. But our plan here is a regular monthly breakdown. We dig deep into the whole comic stuff. Stephen has. 
ridiculous amounts of knowledge in this regard. And I just feel like it's a, a shame that we haven't figured out a way to carry that on. And so we're going to do that. So yeah, a little bit of today, a little bit of a different format instead of going through and doing reviews and that kind of stuff. Just going to run through a lot of the big stories that happen from the month. Right, right. And if one of us has seen, you know, did you see uh, Shazam yet or no? No, but a lot of people did. Yeah. So we'll talk about that from that angle. If one of us had seen it, of course, we'd give our own thoughts. But, you know, like a lot of it's going to be, well, this was the month they canceled such and such title or whatever. Very comic centric. Uh, lots of cool stuff. And uh, we're excited about it. So uh, that's today. And we're not doing it live. It's gonna, we're just going to do it off air, uh, like a, like film sack for those who are wondering what that's like. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll, put, But it will be up today. And it will be and like will the... Be third month or third monday of the month or however we do this i guess it's and it's safe to start with just two dorks before you try and pull in all the dorks yeah so i, I agree. like this idea yeah we don't want to be pulling our dorks you know we don't nobody wants yeah. to be yanking on their dork and all that yeah, exactly. so we'll, we'll see yeah. we'll see how that goes but i'm very much excited about it and um you know what the the kind of vibe we have with steven on mondays here on the show is indicative of of a lot of what you're going to get and i think more of that is a good thing so check it out That'll be later today, comicdorks.com. All right, Steven, let's get into it. Um, I can't believe there are a thousand is issues of Detective Comics. How is that even possible? Well, so for a long time, Detective Comics, which launched um, on this month, uh, March 27th in 19, what is it, 37, mm -hmm. uh, was the one of the longest continually running nonstop comic books out there. Until DC launched the new 52, and then they created Volume 2, and they ran 50-plus uh, issues there. And then as we approached the 1,000th issue about a year ago, they flipped back to the old numbering. So some people will say, well, this isn't actually issue number 1,000, but for all intents and purposes, it is. And uh, that's, a, that's a huge milestone. Action Comics was the last comic to hit 1,000 issues, and that was last year. Uh, and so I think that's a pretty big, pretty big deal. And of course, they've got a couple of different versions of the Detective Comics 1000. Uh, a lot of people during the Action Comics number 1000 got kind of confused because there was like this big 80 page kind of retrospective on Superman. And they were like, where's the story? And it's like, well, that wasn't really the issue. So you want to make sure that you're getting the actual Detective Comics number 1000 mm. and not the 80th anniversary uh, edition or whatever that the, that is also going to be coming out this week. Because Saturday is Batman's birthday. Oh, my gosh. 80 years wow. old Batman's going to be crazy. 80 years old. Him. I didn't get him anything. Shoot. <laughs> what do you That's get? That's okay. He already has everything. Yeah, I was going to say. What are you going to get the <laughs> guy who's got, guy got everything in a cave yeah. in his basement? Or around, his, a giant penny. around his belt. Um, I'm, uh, I'm surprised they were able to f suss this out though. Cause aren't there a lot of weird one-offs? Like, how do they know it's a thousand exactly? Cause there's so many like, well, and that's, that's what I said. Uh, the nice thing is detective comics actually ran issue one, issue two, issue three, uh, for since its beginning. So it's been uninterrupted. So they're not counting like mm. uh, Batman family or they're not ta talking about Robin issues or Nightwing or anything like that. This is just detective comics. And there are some times where detective comics went twice monthly in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, the only place where there is a, a break in that numbering is when they launched the new 52 and started over from number one with the uh, detective comics. Yeah. So if he's 80, mm -hmm. is this right around uh, Kingdom Come time for him? Like how old is he supposed to be in Kingdom Come? Mm. Do we know? Uh, Gregory Peck's age. Oh, so like more like seventies, probably. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. Gregory Peck's age when Kingdom Come came out, or Gregory? I don't know. Peck's it's age it's now. Alex Ross painted uh, Gregory Peck to be uh, to be the older <laughs> Bruce Wayne in Batman? that series. That oh, totally really? looked like Gregory Peck too. Huh. Totally did. Um, I just always think about that when these comics actually reach those ages. It's like, oh wait a minute, that's that's Kingdom Come time. Like mm -hmm. we're we're there, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a great book, and people should read it. It is really good. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, covers on that one. Oh too. my gosh, the covers are so good, and the just all. I mean, well, if you like Alex Ross, you like that painterly yeah. approach to comics. It's like the end all, be all of that sort of thing. But um, I know some people don't like it. I, actually, Stephen, I've never asked you. Where do you land on the whole Alex Ross I, look? I like a lot of Alex Ross's stuff. I think the biggest problem, I guess, one of the nicest things about Alex Ross when he was doing Marvels uh, with Kurt Busiek, and when he did Kingdom Come with uh, Mark Wade was that he took like real life people and painted them into the roles. So, you know, uh, Patrick Stewart looked like Professor X decades before the X-Men movie even came out. Right. Uh, and then you had um, 
um, who was the guy that was the father of uh, Fred McMurray oh, yeah. as, as Shazam for the Kingdom Come stuff. And that's really good, except it becomes a distraction when you're looking through going, OK, how many references can I find and how many real people are being used in this? Yeah. Otherwise, I really like his stuff. Man, F uh, Fred McMurray mentioned, uh, ask your grandparents on that guy. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, and that's the weird thing. I mean, with Shazam coming up uh, this weekend, I think it's this weekend, right? Or is it next weekend? Yeah. Next weekend. Um, the uh, the original model for Shazam was Fred McMurray. Really? Of, of My Three Sons fame. Yeah. Really? What the crap? Huh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and know, I know people are saying, well, wait, uh, My Three Sons came out long after Shazam came out. Go back and look at young Fred McMurray and look and see uh, what a what a handsome devil he was mm, and how yeah. they would take that hair and that eye line and everything sure. and uh, look at it, look at turn him into Shazam. Maybe it's not so weird then to have Zachary Levi in this role because, um, we, you know, people think of Zachary Levi as comedy and goofy face and, you know, mm -hmm. not yep. tough. uh Mr. Tough superhero man, and and from all accounts, he's pulling it off. I mean, we'll oh, dig man. into this deeper later uh, today. But Shazam did real yeah. well. The reviews are up in the nineties. Like, oh yeah, the lowest crazy. review that I saw was a um, B minus from AV Club. Wow, wow. I guess, and I can't see it this weekend because it doesn't come out until the fifth. April yeah, the fifth. Now there were some. And now AMC, I think it was AMC, or maybe it was Fandango. I forget which one. Mm. They were running a thing where you could actually see the movie two weeks early, and some of our fans actually did get to go see the movie before everyone else. And uh, what, what's the? I mean, general thumbs up. I mean, like up. I said, when you look at it, uh, Vox gave it a four and a half. The Hollywood Reporter said that this is a uh, definitely a little bit uh, for older viewers, but a return to comedy. Uh, I've seen other reviews say DC finally gets how to do a movie. Uh, the Rotten Tomato Meter, uh, the, or the tom t Tomato Matomer, or whatever it's called, it's got, what, a 92%? <laughs> Tomatometer. <laughs> yeah, who knows how you're supposed to say that. Um, yeah, I'm looking here, 92%, like you said, uh, hmm. opens this weekend. Or no, last weekend, so it opened yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. Um, it says coming soon on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that's Tomatoes. because yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, did yeah. a limited the, release. The, the, Oh. Past week and the wide release comes out on April fifth or whatever. It well, is. our very own Tom Merritt saw it and sh couldn't shut up about it. He thought it was awesome. Ooh. Yeah, we had a big chat over uh, text, and he was like, "Dude, that movie's great." And I'm like, who bought that? I uh, don't remember who bought that in the thing. Do you remember Brian? Who owns I that? I don't. I'm pulling it up right now. The 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 draft. There it is. I mean. It, Chat room says the the hope Shaz you've enjoyed this draft. Yeah, uh, chat chat room says Shazam trailer just looked plain goofy. I mean, there's definitely a goofy quality to it, yeah. but isn't that part of the charm here? Is yeah, I mean, imagine know? if you were a kid. I mean, this is. I mean, I complained about this whenever the first trailer dropped. And I was like, oh, this is going to be big all over again. Mm -hmm. But uh, this Night is Attack this is Shazam. now big done right. Oh, Night Attack has them, do they? Yep. Mmm, those bastards. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I think Goofy may be right for those people that liked. What was that uh, spy show that Zachary Levi was in? Uh, Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Chuck. For people who like that, I think they're going to like this movie. He, to me, he looks so different than he used to look. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because he had all that wearing hair. wearing that bulky suit underneath. Yeah, or something. It seems like there was something about his old. He just had, well, he had more hair and he was, I know he's younger and wasn't as buffed out. I don't know. Something about it always makes me think he's not even the same actor. I know. He totally... It is a complete complete uh, 180 degree change. Yeah. Uh, how about Digimon Hansu? He's in this. Digimon, I call him. I know that's wrong. But he's the wizard, you know. The Who, wizard Shazam. Yeah. The Shazam wizard is played by Digimon Hansu. <laughs> that's not how you say his name, but I like saying it that way. Uh, <laughs> we just saw him in his first movie. What was it? Oh, uh, Stargate. Was his first? Oh, right, um, right. First, I think it was before. Yeah, it was before that Spielberg and it was when thing. He was just going by Digimon. Like he wasn't even using his full name. He yeah. was just. Uh, it was yeah. D. It was. Uh, it was when he was uh, Digimon Go. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, he was just chucking cards and entertaining kids. It was a good time. Um, all right. <laughs> what else? Oh, uh, Cobra Kai season two. That's happening. Yeah, they. Uh, I guess they dropped the official release date at C2E2 this past weekend. That's the uh, Comics and Convention Expo in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look forward to April 24th on, on, on the YouTube Premium. So if you haven't uh, gotten that thing, um, I have signed up for that a long time ago. 
mainly because I hate watching commercials ahead of my my YouTube videos, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can get all sorts of uh, extra stuff, and that first season of Cobra Kai was really good, especially Mm -hmm. for fans of the original series. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, uh, let's see here. The audio is really bad on that video that I sent you guys. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like they didn't mic them up. They're standing 20 feet away from the from the uh, camera in a in a busy expo hall. That's a that's a f- thing people do now these days. Like as I noticed, the Bill and Ted thing was just them announcing a thing on this phone. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, all right, all right <laughs> sure, I guess that's fine. Uh, we're I, I, filming this on a, on a phone, but you're supposed to believe we're actually going to get a feature film made. Yeah, and he got him back there doing his whole Ted thing, and but Bill's not acting like Bill at all. It's it's odd. It's very odd. Um, okay, so I want to see. Uh, the, I still haven't seen the season or the first. season. Oh, you got to watch it. I know. I mean, I, so I suck. Good. I suck. Here uh, is so. But it used to be YouTube Red. Now it's YouTube Premium. Is that yeah. the deal? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, Google. Much better name. Yeah, but it, could they just pick names and stick with them? They do this all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, but YouTube Red did sound like a porn site. Like it, it sounded bit. like. <laughs> it did a little bit. Like Red Light yeah. District. Like, uh, hey. Exactly. Yeah, welcome exactly. to Red Root YouTube Hubba, Red. Hubba. YouTube Red. After Dark. All right, Stephen, uh, that's about all there is uh, for reporting today. Of course, we yeah. have a uh, whole months of content to talk about later today on Comic Dorks. I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, love his expertise as we move forward with bringing that show back to people. And again, it's monthly. It feels, feels more like a proper comic book show because you get your comic books once a month. Mm-hmm. Now you get your comic dorks once a month. See? Exactly. Exactly. That's how it is. Uh, anything else going on around the uh, major spoilers network you'd like people to no, know about? No, we did record our 500th episode of Critical Hit this past week, and it'll come out in April. Uh, but uh, we hit another milestone too, so there you go. Five hundred! Congratulations, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it's huge. gonna be a lot of fun. You should have and... uh, you should have Dick Cheese uh, perform for your concert. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> Brian. I have it backwards. Brian would like that the world don't hire Dick Cheese for your five hundred concert. Maybe today's no. different. Maybe it's better today. Maybe he's like, I, hey, cameras yeah, are cool so. and. I'm into the internet now. Yeah, he probably has to. I mean, I think he does have to kind of accept that cameras are going to be in his face, and that's a good thing. And that everyone has one in their pocket. like Exactly. Oh, to... this is how people find out about things is <laughs> via social media? Okay, I guess I'm all right with it now. Fantastic. Uh, so do check that out. Check out all the Brian, other great you can shows. Tell your friends to start posting on my Wikipedia again. <laughs> find all uh, that and more, plus some great articles, some great reviews uh, from the entire staff over there at Major Spoilers, Majorspoilers.com, Major Spoilers on Twitter. Stephen, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you later. Stay hydrated. Bye now. Boy, had that stay. It was just, it was like a, one of those Trump Lingle things where he goes, stay. And then lets it out. All right, I'm exiting this. All right, hey, that's it for that. Okay, I do want to say something about Star Trek, if uh, you'll if you'll have me. Um, me yes, of course. Gotta... I'm excited to hear what you think of the, the second season. I'm, right. I'm trying to remember how it started. Let's see. Um... Oh, with the whole Pike thing, yes. Yes. Show me this unit. All right, we're going to show you this <laughs> unit. I started Star Trek Discovery uh, Season 2, and I'd seen Season 1 and enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. I think it had, it's, it had a, some weird rough spots that made no sense to me. Um, but you could tell there was some turmoil at the top. People running the show left, and then new people came on, and then they left. And like there was, It was clear in the show that there, there, there hadn't quite been a unified vision yet, uh, or, or however you want to describe that. Man, I'm only two and a half episodes in, but Season 2 already... A better season and mm-hmm. really good Star Trek. Like it's trekky as hell. It's it's one of those shows though that I'm shocked at how good the effects and the world building is to the point that I you don't notice it. It doesn't jump out like normal for TV special effects do. These are like movie quality, high end. Like that asteroid race in the first episode. Mm-hmm. The holy freaking crap. Like the movies don't do yeah. any better than that. It's amazing no, stuff. No, they've got they've got money behind it in the shows. And, Clearly uh, do, yeah. It's great, but I I really really like it. Um, I think Pike. I, when I was originally you know told oh they're bringing over Pike and the Enterprise is there and all that, I'm like oh that's a nice stunt you're pulling on us. Just fan mm-hmm. you know fan so hand wavy nice. stuff. It's not. It, he's mm-hmm. so good. Like, and it's done with yeah. He's very Bruce Greenwood. Like he he's taking over the mantle. I think from Bruce Greenwood from the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies as far as like a very likable 
fatherly kind of character. Mm -hmm. And he's very, you know, he's got a little bit of snark, a little Kirk in him, but a little Picard even, just a, kind of a more of a smart approach to every every situation. And I just, I'm completely in on him being a captain of whatever ship I'm on. Like, I think he's awesome. And uh, I haven't I haven't gotten to see a, a hipster adult uh, barista Spock yet. That Spock? hasn't happened yet. Um, but I think I'm close. And uh, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I just really like it. It's a nice reminder that yeah. Saru is, uh, and and um, Jones's portrayal of that of that oh. character is just some of the best stuff ever. Like great. it's Tilly's great, great, man. Tilly's so yeah. good this season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. she should be obnoxious and annoying. And any any anything on paper, I don't want that dialogue. I don't want her, and I don't mm -hmm. want her approach. That actress just nails it so good that I want her in every scene. She's yeah. so good. And I'm also, I like that we're getting to know the rest of this bridge crew better than we have before. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they killed off that idiot that came over with Pike early. That was, <laughs> oh, spoiler. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler. But it's not It's not a big spoiler. The, you knew the guy was fodder spoiler. the second you saw him. You're yeah, just like, exactly. okay, that guy's not going to be long for this world. But, but it's just great. And I'm super impressed. And I can't wait to dig through the rest of it. And I just am happy to say that I feel like they've hit their stride and, it's mm -hmm. that's a strong show right now. So it took me forever. Really but good. You can Battlestar Galactica your trek and end up with something really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this one is a little less of that. Like it feels a little more the positivity of Trek is back in a way. It's like yes. they were yes. they were fighting the a war in the last one. Sure. The last one was a war, and war means this, and you gotta do things with war you don't want to do, and there's a lot of hidden stuff happening and secrets being passed around. And this one it's like, no, there's a truce, we have an armistice, so now we can move forward. And it's very Star Trek. It's like, weird anomaly. Let's check it out. We need to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's just there's a moral authority to Starfleet again that it just, ah, it just it feels like I'm back home in Star Trek, and I really like it. So, thanks, Star Trek. Cool. You yeah. did it. You did it. They done, they done good with you. They did. They done did good. They done did good. <laughs> All right, before we uh, blow out of here, I do have a mashup to play today. Uh, this is called, let's see, this is 1671 through 1675. It's called It's a Horrible Life. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Good deal. I, I don't know what that right. means because I haven't heard this yet, but uh, here it comes from Jamie over there at uh, uh, patreon.com slash TMS mashups. Check it out. Here you go. Ah, oh, she's a nice bird. Ah, I met a nice bird over the weekend. Look at that nice bird over there. <laughs> I think you've gone full uh, Australian, you, but that's fine. But Jordan, and your bird can sing. <laughs> I'm going to let him talk now. You didn't let him last exactly. time. Oi, hello, it's me, Philip. Hot poker in your anus, or? <laughs> I guess I carried a bigger one then. I wonder what the bigger one is. Jamie, can I get that cut out? Uh, I want to hear Randy say, I carried a bigger one. Yeah, he carried a bigger one. It wasn't me. In the kitchen. It wasn't me. In the bathroom. It wasn't me. In the shower. It wasn't me. I was always pulling those out and pushing it back in. Uh, Jamie, I want that one too. Why are people still sucking my toes? That reamer has a hole in it. That Love reamer that. has a hole in it. Also, isolate yep. that audio. <laughs> You're going to show off your e-peen. Show it off. Whip out your e-peen and show it. Yeah, yes. there's a bag of shit I can eat. I love bread. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in the uterus and Vladimir says hi. He'll see you in eight months. <laughs> we are going to go to the store. Please take the trash out before we get home. <laughs> How's your boner? Is it big enough? Sarge. Sarge Ben Hayan. Sarge. Uh, used like bizarre like forms Sarge. of... Would you like a lemon twist in your cappuccino? <laughs> it's a horrible life. Fuck you, Ben. Bedford Falls Sanitarium. <laughs> you Bedford Falls Diner. Hey, Clarence, take your wigs and shove them up your ass. Yeah, a little film sack in there at the end. <laughs> Wasn't it? That was film sack. That's a good, that was film sack. Yeah, that was a little um, uh, butterfly effect uh, <laughs> yeah. intro. Yeah, that was a good one. Nice one, Jamie. Yes. Jeez, you saved a, saved a good one for a uh, yes. thing. Scott plays special wow. creative cursing. What? That's another oh, uh, we'll another mashup. All right, we're saving that one. I imagine Mark Knopfler will make an appearance in that one. <laughs> and his penis, probably. Yes. yes. All right, well, exactly. we've done it. Why is Dan on my screen? 
Oh, he's in the. Sorry, he, that yeah, freaked he, me he out. Happy to paste in a photo to show how light it just looks like he's uh, like he's live, like he's been sitting here the whole time yeah, watching us. That's what I was thinking because it's just in the corner of my screen. Like, ah, Dan's there. Ah. Uh, anyway, all right, uh, we're done. That's it. Patreon.com/slash/tms. Please support us. We'd love it. And uh, if you're looking for everything else, Frogpants.com/slash/tms. We'll be back tomorrow. Full day of uh, content. And uh, later today, of course, uh, the next live thing I do is TMS PM at three thirty. And uh, you're going to want to check that out. And Kim and I are trying. We Everybody felt like garbage yesterday, so we didn't do skim. But we may sneak it in today. If we really, it was you felt like garbage. It was Scott. mostly you me. Felt- Carter's got con flu from a GDC. Oh, um, so did she did she Purell or did she just shake a lot of hands and she, hug a lot of fans? And- uh, hugged a lot of hands. No, shook a lot of hands. <laughs> she hugged Terpster, which I think was probably the problem. Oh, never mind. That's it. That's the one thing. And yeah. there's no Purell on Earth that can... Uh, that can kill that bacteria. <laughs> nope. Brought it all the way from Bristol. Who knows how she got it, but she has definitely got it. She's home home from work today, sick as a dog, so that's fun. Anyway, uh, that's it. Let's get out of here. Shant, you play a song for us, please? I will play a song, play a song from a guy named Patrick who says, Scott and Brian, Monday, March 25th, will mark the fourth anniversary of the passing of my dad. Oh. When I was in this band 10 years ago, one of his favorite songs we played was a cover of Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Every time he would mention his son was in a band, being a proud parent, he wanted to share his son's work, and this was the song he always would pass around. The ironic bit is that this was never actually released, though it was recorded at the same time as our full-length album, which was called Rock and Roll Child, released in 2010. We decided to keep it for ourselves due to being young and unaware aware of how covers could legally function in an otherwise original album it would mean a lot to me if you would play this for him thank you guys for all that you do sign patrick so this is uh, a band called high tolerance no longer around um recorded this for their album rock and roll child in 2010 but never released it as part of that album and uh i think it's a it's an uh, a missed opportunity on their part this is a great cover they do some things with Folsom prison blues that that i haven't heard before in the cover so i really really like it and uh changes things up about um i don't know 30 seconds in so so keep listening here is high tolerance and their cover of johnny cash's Folsom prison blues this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Can you smell it? Mm-hmm. Man, I like I it when this show is the exact time length that we designed it. No today. kidding. Look at that. 10 to 30. Yeah.